And we're live, I think. Oh, gloomy men, sign Banu. There we are, a little bit of uh, internationalist. That was Mongolian. It's the only Mongolian I can remember. I used to remember, I don't know as well, but I only remember half of it now. The reason why I've opened with uh, hello, how are you in Mongolian is because we just had a parcel delivery by our Mongolian uh, parcel force driver, not parcel force, the other one. And I'm always delighted to jump out and 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 say my two phrases in Mongolian. Ogluni mend, good morning. And uh, sign Banu, how are you? And he honestly thinks I'm insane. He's like, why are you even interested in that place? It's taken me so long to get away. <laughs> So I like to get away. And he can't understand me even when I say it. So I'm obviously saying it completely wrong. But there we are. So I'm, I'm always really pleased that when he comes. But <laughs> I think he dreads it. There we are. So good morning, all gloomy men. Sign Banu, how are you? Um, so yesterday, excuse me, we had uh, Chris Lef. Feb on, or Chris LaFab, as I call him, who does all my internet shenanigans um, and fixes problems all the time. And it was just nice to have him on saying what he did. If you've got, if you're going to do any tech things, he's definitely the man to, to do. He's do I'm encouraging uh, him to copy my video format that I've done. So just start putting out helpful hints when i started on this i i mean there's a lot of people who don't know what a url is it's uh the address at the top is www dot something something is the url unique oh i don't actually know what it stands for um but that's a very simple start so i've been encouraging him to answer all those simple starts in video form so it also we've had Horse trainers, I'm always saying to Teresa, who doesn't seem to watch this, who makes my lovely artwork cups and mugs and lots of besides, coasters, t-shirts, everything, to put her business link into the comments. Um, and she does sometimes, but not enough. So today, I thought to be helpful to everybody, um, it's going to be promote yourself. What day is it? Is it Wednesday? Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Yes, yeah, Wednesday. Promote yourself Wednesday. So whatever it is, why not dive into the comments? But well, hang on. No, I'll finish this sentence. And you can get diving into the comments. While you're diving into the comments, putting who you are, where you live, what you do, the any any links that you need to get out there, um, links to your websites or whatever. Far away, promote yourself Wednesday. Why not? And um, let's just find out who's where, what they do. I always find it very interesting. I always find it super interesting. And it's always a little bit, obviously, if we we're at a, a party, or well, in the days when we went to parties, or you meet someone and you say, What do you do? And I say, I train horses. And they're like, ooh, training horses is lovely. And I go, what do you do? And they go, oh, nothing as, as glamorous as that. And then they say what they do. Well, to me, it's interesting. And it's always a bit sad when people are down on themselves. I mean, I'm I'm amazed when the accountant comes around and, and is like, oh, yeah, just put this here, this here, this here. I'm just looking at him like, you're like Gandalf. <laughs> You know how to do all these things. And I just find it absolutely fascinating. So whatever your sphere is, if you're retired, whatever your interest is, um, stick it in the comments. Write a little bit about yourself, a little short bio, a few sentences, any links. You never know when people are just going. And if you're watching on replay, don't let this stop you. Stick it in the comments and we'll really get a little social thing going. It'd be absolutely marvellous. While you do that, I'm going to get the invite link.
so that if you want to join the show share some advice chat about things particularly rider confidence which is my area of expertise but we can also chat about horse behavior interneting your job or anything else there we are so here we go to join the show and ask a question or offer advice comma please click this link i've said it before and i'll say it again nikki hello how are you um i've said it before and i'll say it again i'm afraid i can't answer the written questions because it just turns into a facebook live then and what's the point of doing that because i can do facebook lives where i just listen to myself droning on i say droning on of course i mean being scintillating and charismatic uh, you know how your own <laughs> your own voice sounds in your ears. <sighs> so don't don't let me do that. Don't leave me hanging. Come on, high five. Get get into this chat and ask your questions because I'm I'm not going to answer the written questions. <laughs> Reading's not as much fun as chatting. There we are. So anyway, the way that I've I've formatted it today. Uh, and the way that I have been formatting it, if anybody wants to copy, is as I go through the day and, you know, people write to me and questions come up and, and uh, I chat with Zana we, and Freddie as well sometimes. And we chat about rider confidence and how we could do things, how you could see the world. We chat a lot about mindfulness. I'm sat here by the koi cart with the sound of the running water. We've got things around us to remind us of our travels. I've got an Acer tree from Korea to remind me of the World Championships in Korea. And um, actually, oh, I'm wearing the Mongolian. That's a coincidence. Yeah, I'm wearing my Mongolian uh, competitor's T-shirt. My hat there is the World Horse Archery Federation logo. You are in... Korea. So mindfulness is a very important part of what we do. And we chat mindfulness, rider confidence, different mental outlooks that you can adopt, that the choice is there, the way that we self-identify, um, the way that to take a positive attitude and not positive thinking, a positive attitude can be negative thinking as well. When we come to do the Rider Confidence course, all we do is think about when we will fall off and when the horse will rear. And that might be negative thinking if you think about it. Though I prefer the term helpful thinking or powerful thinking rather than positive thinking. But it is with a positive attitude. So as we come across these things, if, if, if something gets said, what I do is I've always got my phone with me and I just bob it down onto... Uh, a little notes thing. Uh, there they are. There they are. You can read what today's subject is going to be if you like. And that means that when I come onto the lives, I've got my little topic of the day. And if no one joins the broadcast, I'll do my topic of the day and then ring off and that'll be that. So that's the way I set it up. It's super easy. Whatever your niche is, you can do that too. As Chris proved yesterday, coming on just to say hello, say what he does, talk about confidence, talk about the 54321 thing. Did you hear him yesterday and did you find that helpful? Did you actually Google Mel Robbins and say she is brilliant? If you didn't, I'm going to put her down again, actually, because you're missing out. If you, if you have struggles with anxiety, struggles with um, other people's opinions, struggles with uh, low self-esteem, like crippling low self-esteem, all the way to mm, a bit of imposter syndrome when, you know, at every level, she's super. She's American, but never mind. <laughs> okay, let me put her down. Mel Robbins. Mel Robbins. Um um overcoming i'll just put it overcoming anxiety 
Super, get on and watch her. Did everybody see that? Okay, let me have a quick quick read. And um, especially if you, if you, I'm just going to have a quick read of the comments, find out if anybody uh, looked at Mel Robbins or indeed got any help from what Chris was saying, which is the 54321 do. And I returned by saying, if you have an idea, you've got to do it. And then I had an idea that I have to do because I've had the idea. And I've forgotten what it is. It'll, it'll come back. <laughs> oh. Oh, Susan. Susan, I used the 54321 to get the housework done yesterday. That's exactly it. It's like when you come into a should, it's changing a should. I should do this washing up now. I should clean the pipes. I should whatever, sort out my sock drawer. The 54321 and you're doing it. So there isn't even time to say, yes, I should. And I really need to turn my should into a must. And then I'll go, I must sort out the sock drawer. And 54321 goes straight from I should to I am doing it. I am doing it. 54321. And, and you're in there already. It's, it's super. Do try it. Do try it. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Lovely. Karen's doing well. I like that. Lovely. Hello, Maria. Finance manager who works freelance from home. I'm going to read all these afterwards. Look, there you go. Luxury Lodge. Beautiful. Uh, feel free to put on your contacts, your links, um, anything that you find. This is great, this. Okay, lovely. So, uh, Tony Lee's got a question. If you'd like to hop on and ask that question, we'll get a bit of background to it. Lovely. Beautiful. Come on, stick your, stick your um, links in. People are forgetting to put their links. It's all about promoting yourself. There we are. Oh, hello, Chris. Hello, Marie. Hello, Katie. Hello, Mary. Hello, Louisa. Hello, Kerry. Hello, Bree. Hello, StreamYard. There we are. Beautiful. Okay, have I put the link on yet? Did I put the link on? Yeah, I did. Did I? I don't know if I did, actually. I'm sure I did. I'll put it on again. Oh, there we are. Um, there's no copy option with that. To join the show, click the link. So let me just put that link on once again. Control-V. There we are. Beautiful. Click that link. Ask your question. Super. Everybody who comes on has found it ridiculously easy to get onto the show and nowhere near as, as uh, nerve-wracking as you might think. So join in. Oh, I'll just move my chair. It's, it's, it's just in a divot here. There we are. That's better. So my topic of the day. Um, let me just get this in the right order. When you started riding horses, when you first decided that you were going to ride horses, it was a big desire to ride horses. Why was it a big desire to ride horses? Because they're beautiful, but a lot of things are beautiful. A lot of animals are beautiful. Um, cheetahs are beautiful. <laughs> Tigers are beautiful. You don't want to ride them. Sharks are beautiful. You don't want to ride them. Because not only are our horses beautiful, but they're also bred to be ridden. They are a long way from the Peristalski's horse, I'm sure I've said that wrong, that was uh, wandering around in, I know, the steppes of Russia or somewhere. Um, and they've been bred. They've been bred for the temperament and the bodies to be able to carry us more and more efficiently. They've got bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, they've been bred and developed along with the riding equipment according to whatever style that you use and they are the things for the job and when you first started riding horses you knew they were beautiful you knew that they were rideable which is always good and you knew that people are on horses having the most amazing time the most wonderful we're in mindfulness again now the most wonderful um 
going faster than we could ever go before, uh, being able to see further, uh, having more power, just having a, a super, super time. Humans are augmented by horses into being this binary organism. It's just absolutely wonderful. Everybody's having a lovely time and it's the most exhilarating thing to choose to do. That's why you wanted to do it. Of course, once you got started, the people around you started chipping away at that vision started ignoring every success and emphasizing every danger and stressing every uh, possibility of a mishap and gradually wittering away from horses are exhilarating this is great to you're going to die <laughs> just wittering away until you get to a stage where you really can't get on with your horse. You've also got other people's opinions and everything else. So my point for the day is, if you started off with that attitude of negativity, you wouldn't have even considered getting on a horse. However, that's not the case. You did consider it because you knew it was possible. You knew that billions of people are doing billions of journeys throughout history and you wanted to join those. So this is my thought for the day because I've made this point before. You might remember it. I think I probably made it back in the days when the Social Distance Social Club was just a written comment on a Facebook page. And I was saying, now that we have to social distance, now that we are, have not been able to associate ourselves with the uh, uh, negative Nellies, now I feel bad saying negative Nelly because my wooden horse is called Nelly and she's great, uh, with the negative Nellies down the yard, you haven't been able to. The social distancing has caused you to get away from these um, attitudes that actively search for the dangers, then you are already in a much, much, much better position to seize the rest of this summer and you are already slightly dulled on the looking for danger aspect because you haven't been associating with these people. If you've been really clever, then you've been avoiding Facebook pages uh, as well, apart from mine, of course. So there we go. That's my thought for the day. You wouldn't have got on the horses in the first place. You did. And then everybody else changed your attitude until you found that you were nervous about horses. Use the social distance to learn your lesson that when we go back, maybe it would be best to choose the people that you're associating with and the pages that you're reading and the magazines that you're reading to maintain the advantages which have come from this social distancing. Put your comments on what I've just said. I will be delighted to, to see if I've hit a chord. And uh, it's true what I've said. If I haven't hit a chord, you need to think about it until it does. Right, there we are. Anyway, we've got some... Uh, so uh, Sarah's not got a picture, so I'll just uh, skip over to Claire, who seems to be connected and working. Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, I can. Yes. Success. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Mom, how can I help you? Can you help me? Which way are well, we going? Um, I'm looking for some uh, probably advice. Um so I was watching your stream live yesterday um, um, with Chris and um, I, again, like Chris, I had really big concerns about coming on because I was nervous and, you know, all these worries about, you know, being judged or, or just the thought of being on live stream. So anyway, I thought, no, I'm going to do this. Um, so here I am. Um, so. Did you do the five, four, three, two, one thing? 
Uh, I didn't have time to think about it. I just, you know. <laughs> Good. Anyway. Good. Um, okay. So my issues are uh, lack of confidence and from um, pop, and, and I actually know what my, where it stems from. So to give you a bit of a background, um, I've had a Welsh cob for 20 years. Um, he's now oh, retired oh. at 25 and he's doing okay. Um, and I'd kind of been out of riding for a few years and realized I think I need to get back in the saddle. So um, I kept putting it off because I felt a bit disloyal if I was to get another one before his time. But in the end, um, I did. I went out and got something completely different. Um, it may have been like a midlife crisis or something, but anyway, um, I got a, a three-year-old ex racehorse um and he was slow off the track so um he was available and he seemed to have suited me what i was after um i have been known because i've been riding for 25 plus years you know um given that it was pretty much with the same horse all the time um we were trying to build a relationship um and and bearing in mind, I think it was also a knee-jerk reaction because I'd had a silent miscarriage um, previous to the purchase of the horse. So I was, um, I, I think I was thinking, right, I, I really need to focus on something else. Um, I we, we were together for probably uh, five months and then I had a horrific fall um, and said horse, we were out riding um it was a nice sunny day sunny afternoon it was we were walking um and he just uh just broke into this bronc um uh, it got really excited took off and we were galloping i'd lost my stirrup i was trying to hang on for dear life nothing was stopping him and so i fell because losing my stirrup i lost my balance and i broke my sternum and after being in hospital, I spent 12 weeks at least trying to repair. And needless to say, I was paying someone else to ride him to keep him going. And then four months later, I got back on him just so I can say I've got back on. Uh, but it was tough, really tough. And I walked, trot and cantered. Um, but then I knew the relationship wasn't going to be the same again. And I knew that as I'm getting older, my confidence is lesser and I don't bounce. And also, I may add that in the last 20 years with my cob, I'd never parted company with him. Mm -hmm. So I'm not experienced at falling off. Mm -hmm. And as you can see where this was going, um, but it turned out I was managed to rehome um, my thoroughbred to a really lovely couple who adore him and we keep in touch and um okay i'm well. going to take my hat off i take my hat off to anybody who sees that they've got the wrong horse and is enough of a horse person to think i'm going to sell this horse because it's the wrong horse in the wrong stable it's a square peg in a round hole i know where there's a mm. square hole over there horsemanship goes well and when people tell me a story and they say and then i sold it honestly the the clouds part and hordes of angels go oh <laughs> it's it's just wonderful and i'm so and when you re when you were coming around to say it i would delay in saying it delay in saying it i was like please have sold Please have sold the horse. Please have sold the horse. Uh, or given it away. That's also fine. Super. You should be so impressed with yourself as a horse person for putting the square peg in the square hole and leaving your round hole ready for your round peg to come into. I interrupted because I was so pleased. Carry on. No, that's all right. Thank you. I mean, it was a really, really tough decision because... I have to try not emotionally get involved and and think for my safety and and everyone else's safety and for his a squillion his percent you shouldn't get emotionally involved mm -hmm. um one of the greatest uh, one of the greatest 
assets that I've had over the years is to have had lots of horses at the same time. So we've got about 20 now. And if you had 20 horses, 19 of them were going beautifully just as you like, just like your old cob, and you train them, and everyone's like, oh, your horses are so well trained. Blah, blah, blah. And one of them has dumped you and broke your sternum. Uh, you'd be like, that horse doesn't like being here. It doesn't like what we do. And you would mm. sell it. And how much guilt would you carry that you'd failed the horse? You couldn't train it. You're a bad horse trainer. None, because you've got 19 other ones that are absolutely tip top. And you know mm. that you're perfectly fine at what you do. And I promise that when I sell a horse because it doesn't fit in with what I do, there is zero, zero, zero guilt, sense of failure. At the most, it's, you know, oh, that's a shame. It's a nice horse. And if it wasn't such a twat, it'd really love it here. And that's it. <laughs> that's the, that's yeah. the level of guilt that I have. But mm. although it's a shame, I'm a horse person enough to know that it has to move on. And I'm proud of being that horse person. So you've got you and me doing exactly the same things. The difference is you're doing it and feeling guilty or a failure or whatever you want to think. I'm doing it feeling like the best horseman in the world. And the only difference is I've got 19 other horses that are waving a banner for me. So well, there's I've, I've, no I've, I've, failure in, in selling the horse. Well, I don't feel um, I don't feel guilty now because I, I know it's, in the end it was the right decision. Um, not only should and then you not feel guilty, later, you should feel really pleased, really pleased and proud that you're the horse person <laughs> that you are. A million percent. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, it was a big jump to go from one type of horse to a completely different end of the spectrum. But um, I, I, five months later, I then went and bought an, another horse, which was much more suited. And I was much more aware of what I was looking for. And I had to really think about what I wanted to do with my cob. Uh, we, we did jumping, we did cross country, endurance, everything, you know, and we had Beautiful. a fantastic life together. We were a great team and I miss it, but I can't recreate that. I've just got to be able to find the right one and to do something as, as nice, uh, as good. Um, so I, I I found a Frisian mare um, that in, in, in November and I have a love for the Frisians because I used to work for a carriage masters. So I'm very familiar with their behavior and temperament and everything else that comes with them. And um, yeah. she's and like a weird, gentle giant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they teach you to ride again. Um, unfortunately, she wasn't in the best of condition when I got her, and I was well aware. And she she is more mature, but I needed that after what I'd been through, and I had to be realistic, thinking, okay, I'll sacrifice jumping. I'm 40 this year, so mm. I'm happy to slow down a bit because of what's happened. Um, and I th I think and, and and so basically, I've been doing months and months of groundwork with her long reined lunged long range long reined for days and days and days and we're waiting for that point sorry that part where we can build her up get the top line so she can actually feel comfortable fitting the saddle um i have ridden her but uh, only briefly just to get the feel um and she she just pleases me so much and i can't wait to have my saddle fitted on the first of june fingers crossed and then we can start our journey together um but i have a few questions now i've got to this point <laughs> mm. and that is i want to try uh, you you spoke the other day and mentioned that we shouldn't rely on horses to be our confidence givers yes. and that made me think and i yes you're right i need to make sure that i sort myself out so i don't affect her with mm. my confidence issues yes um i'm keen to come and take part in one of your courses and mm -hmm. it's something I've been really thinking about would be good for me because my fear is okay if I do fall off again I need to be prepared and I need mm. to um not let that knock me again yes um and also um because I um because I lost my stirrups when I fell 
I've got a massive hang up about losing my stirrups. And when I'm riding, sometimes if I'm not doing the right things, I lose my stirrup and then I think, oh, it, it, it's all flashbacks. And mm-hmm. I think uh, one, I want to get her prepared and then our relationship is building really well because of the groundwork. Um, and I just want to make sure I'm doing everything right by her. And so the question is, how can I firstly help build my confidence more when I'm without affecting her so much? And also, how could I perhaps work her on the ground, continue, continuously work on her on the ground until the saddle fit in and get her adjusted to carrying weight again without someone being on her? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it, it's very sensible. Um I've never done it, although I can see the the use. So as as far as carrying an artificial weight to prepare for um, a saddle or prepare for a rider, I've never done it, so I, I shan't comment because I'll just be making it up. But if anybody in the comments has done that, let's hear your story. Um, but certainly you need to enjoy the process of having the occasional training session where you ride with one stirrup with and with one with stirrup one and then stirrup. you yes and then you won't be afraid of losing your stirrup so uh, just practice that in your normal bite sizes we're going to go for a walk i'm going to slip one foot out of a stirrup and just l- learn how to find my stirrup Learn how to turn okay. my toe without having to look down. Because when, they, when they're galloping round or cantering round or trotting round, it happens all the time to me when I'm, when I'm uh, doing horse archery or whatever. And I've just got the knack of doing a repeated action with my foot that will hook the stirrup. Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Keep going. Uh, uh, and then you find it and I'll refine my stirrup on the go. And it just doesn't really affect me there's also a little way of shifting your weight so so you don't want to put your weight on the one stirrup and swing the saddle so you just find a way of doing that and then maybe a little exercise um with the other foot out and then maybe a little and we're just talking as if this was normal behavior because you will lose your stirrups at times and we can't we must be prepared for that and with no stirrups of course and of course old school Everybody remembers old school riding lessons where the first thing they do is like, you're not having those and they cross them over the saddle and mm. you bobble yeah. around with no stirrups at all. Just just um, staying on, using your balance, using your seat, using your reductors. I can even do rising trot with no stirrups because you're going up and down on your on your reductors. I mean, I there's so many ways. Videos. Prepare. You had, a, you had a video about... Um, um riding out of the, out of the saddle um mm. and and letting the horse run through it and that that was another on interesting stirrups. one i thought about i love yeah. it i love it i mean it's the exact opposite to sit deep and drive them on and there's the place for both of them but i find it super interesting to to stand on cuz i I stand for the sports that I do, um, for the horse archery and the jigatofka. You stand up, you try and get off the horse as much as possible, spread your stirrups, and then you've got a, a, a base for your feet that's far wider than the size of your bum. So actually, you're super stable. If the horse was to jump sideways, which it does sometimes, you've got more chance of staying on because yeah, you, you stood on yeah. these stirrups. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna, I was uh, doing, hang on, I've just got a, a little story. I got. Um, I was doing a horse archery competition and we set off and the flipping thing was ever so keen to get into the track and it did these massive plunging into gallops. First thing I did was lose my stirrup, but I was already through the, the timing gate and I had to shoot the, the targets. So I stood on the one stirrup and sort of like, pressed my other leg against the horse and and then shot the shot the targets probably missed them all but i was a bit embarrassed that the first thing i'd done was go Whoa, and, and lose my stirrup. <laughs> it doesn't make it doesn't make you feel terribly professional uh, i got to the end i was kind of like oh, look, looking down at the ground thinking oh, but no one ever saw that and then um, this american chap Trey, turned around and he goes i love the way you ride and it's like 
that's mental because that was rubbish. <laughs> and it was purely because I was, I was stood up and was allowing the horse to um, move under me, even though I'd lost mm. the stirrup. And now here am, yeah. I tell, here am I telling this story and you can see the, the joy that I've got in it because I've got a lovely compliment, although you should never listen to the cheers because then you won't listen to the booze. Um, but I have. And, uh, and I wasn't the least bit bothered. And so there's jo I've got absolute joy in training to ride the mishaps, training to ride. I've lost the stirrup. Yeah. If I do lose a stirrup then I almost, well, without a doubt, every time, just I'm just thinking now, I've always, without a doubt, every time, used it as an opportunity to, to, to get my foot and just... And um, cowboy boots, you know, they're pointy. That's so, yeah. when you lose your stirrup, it's, an, a, it's a little point at the front of the boot to go through the big stirrup and refine your stirrups. That's why they've, um, they've got pointy pointy fronts. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's not a big clumpy boot hitting the side of the stirrup yeah. all the time when you try to, to refine yeah. it. So it's a, it's a done thing. It's a normal thing and yeah. can be a joyous thing. So mm. above all, I would say, learn to ride without a stirrup because you've got to hang up about mm. it. Find the joy yeah. in learning how to ride without a stirrup and, and imagine mm. that, when you've done that, there's going to be people leaning on the fence going, wow, you're so good at that. And the, and the fact is, all it meant was you practiced, starting at walk, then at trot. You and your horse have got this, this little bond. She'll know exactly what you're, what you're doing because you do it all the time. If you're, carrying, if you're carrying baggage about this particular instance where you, where you fell off the X race horse, you go and get rid of that. I spoke about this yesterday. Go and find a hypnotherapist and say, get rid of this image for me. Um, and they'll take the emotion off. The image doesn't go. But if you imagine mm. if you imagine that you fell down the stairs and hurt yourself, which I'm sure you have at some oh, point, yeah, um, um, yeah. you don't carry an emotional baggage to the point where you go cold thinking of going up the stairs. You just think, oh, you've got to be careful mm. on these stairs. They're slipping in the middle. <laughs> Uh, you don't carry any emotional baggage about walking into a lamppost or tripping over the garden steps or or anything like that. So that's what a hypnotherapist can do. They can take off the emotion so that you can remember the incident but not be bothered by it. Uh, so if you are bothered by it, then get rid of that emotion, get that finished, never be bothered by that at all. Practice all the things that could go on. And by the time you've done that, you're going to be having a wonderful time with your horse. Have you got an arena? Yeah. Oh, yes, laughing. so we've got, we've got two different arenas, and so it's quite handy. I mean, I try and uh, I, I even long rein my, my Frisian around the farm. Um, we've got our own land, so not my one well, in livery. So it's nice to have other people there and the support with it because, uh, and e even when I before I sold my thoroughbred. I did get on, I walked, trot, cantered and popped him over a, a, a jump just so I knew I got back on and I, I tried to overcome some of the issues I had. But I, you know, um, I know the Frisian makes me feel differently and she's, she's a big girl, um, but a completely different type of horse. And, completely different. Um, so there's, to, yeah, there's no association that you're doing the same thing. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Um, hoping so. Yeah. Don't hope so. Make um, it so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to put so much work into it, um, and, and I'm looking forward to it. But I just want to kind of get rid of those other demons. And I have to say that everything you've described sounds like you're doing a brilliant job. Oh, thank you. Sounds like you're doing an yeah. absolutely brilliant thank job. You. Every every move you've made with the exception of going from an uh, old favourite to a three-year-old. That's a common, mm -hmm. <laughs> common um, mistake. accident mistake from people, is that when mm -hmm. you go from a horse that's been good for 24 years and it dies or retires or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you get a three-year-old because you can ride, you forget that it's been 21 years since you've struggled with a three-year-old. Yeah. And you've had the associated skill fade. I always yes. use the, yeah, the and, analogy and... that I, I used to play the bass guitar and I sold my bass in 1991 and I am still convinced that I can play the bass. 
and I promise you I can't. Um, <laughs> I think the three, the six years I've had off riding since I retired my my cob is is also you know taken away that routine that I had with riding. Um, of course. I've lost condition and I've put on weight, so everything is harder. Harder, yeah. much harder. So with the exception of that mistake, which is such a common mistake because you think I can ride and you know you can ride mm -hmm. and everything you've done since has demonstrated what a, a, a competent horse person you are, then you've done everything correctly, professionally. And I would then go on to do those exercises in the arena before I consider putting myself in a uh, outside situation where I haven't seen the horse mm. deal with the spook. I'm going to arrange some spooks. I'm going to set up a garden sprinkler and, and ride her through it. And that that might take yeah. three that might take three months of training as you get her used to the garden mm. sprinkler. But that I'm going to ride her over a tarp. I'm going to ride ride her with a flag. I'm going to ride her um, in the rain, in the wind, all all to see how she is. If it's if it's too much of a jump, then I'll I'll long rein her past this mm. um, particular spook that I've set up. You know, I've got That's someone. The plan. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just test, 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 test. And then when you get, leave the arena, it's like let's go out. And just do a little test there. So we'll have Ari playing keepy uppies with his football just around that. You know, just just keep it all yeah. exciting as if you're training yeah. a police horse yeah. or a film horse. It's like, yeah, exactly. Have little adventures. I think, I think coming on one of your courses would be also do me um, some good um, going forward once we do the outside of the schoolwork. Definitely. Yes. Of course, because then yeah. if, if I fall yeah. off, then I'll do this. If it rears, then I'll do this. Yeah. If I lose my balance, then I'll do this. Exactly. Beautiful. Lovely. Excellent. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you very much. How easy was it Thanks, to get Carl. on? Nice. Was it easy? Yeah, it was to get fine. On? Thank you. Super. Thanks very yeah. much. Have fun. Thank you. See you, you later. Take care. Okay, I'm very excited about this. I'm going to go straight over to Sophie, who appears to be outside having some kind of holiday. Hello. Yeah, I Hello. came for a walk. Hello. <laughs> um, I work where from home. Access you? isn't working. Where are you? Um, on the beach. On the beach. Wow, where do you live? Yeah, there you go. Jersey. Oh, lovely. So, yeah, got nothing else to do, so I came for a walk. <laughs> Um, right, everybody just... in the comments, just do do one of those angry faces or something. <laughs> <laughs> that you're out on the beach in Jersey and we're not. Well, that's where I am too. How can I help? Um, well, it's just um, hearing Claire say something there about um, uh, horses' confidence just reminded me of my horse. So I just wanted to share this, I guess. Oh, super. Um, so, she, oh, I don't know, about 2013, I think it was, I, my back really hurt nothing happened just wear and tear over the years and I just couldn't move and I ended up being signed off for work whatever I still rode because that was the only thing that actually helped um but just walked but when I came back to jumping it was really hard and I couldn't like ride my corners it was all going wrong the whole year I was overthinking it um just kept getting eliminated it wasn't good I was getting upset my horse was just getting wound up and she's She's really good. She, if I do my bit, she'll do her bit, which is fair enough. Um, so after that, I took her away. Um, I was meant to be doing this competition at Lark Hill, but it got cancelled. So I was just away for the whole week. And just we just had fun. I think I did a bit of side saddle, went for some hacks, did some cross-country schooling. It was just me and her, just chilled. And I'd realised how seriously I'd taken everything. So when I came back, I just made sure I had fun and everything was fun. Yeah. And ever since, it's been going really well. And I just don't take it seriously anymore. I just, obviously, I do do everything properly. I'm not going to get hurt or anything. But I do make sure that I'm not overthinking stuff. Mm. And do you, do you still have lessons? Yeah. But um, you, yeah. But you play as well. Yeah. So I still have lessons with this 80-year-old woman over here. She's very old school, but I like that because she mm -hmm. doesn't – if I'm doing something wrong, she'll tell me. I find we get a lot of visiting instructors here, and I just feel like they just tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. 
um, I rather be told. Um, so I always go to her when I'm show jumping. When I go away once a year in Devon for a few weeks and we'll have instructions through competitions. Um, but like I, I teach Matt games over here, so every time I get new equipment, I'll practice them with my horse. And she loves it. When Super. I went to a ranch, I did, I did barrel racing, so I came back, taught her that. She loved it. <laughs> so, uh, have you by any chance started the Jersey Barrel Racing Association? No. Are you, are you going <laughs> to? Oh, It'd be to. nice to. <laughs> um, Nikki, Nikki Cade, who comes with us on horse archery around the world, has just started barrel racing up in... Lincolnshire somewhere so uh, you definitely need to hook up with her um, I don't know how big the barrel racing thing is in Britain or how much it is to the American pattern but it's it looks super there's a special way of sitting as you go around the barrels and everything and so I thought because when I first tried it I went all guns blazing like I would do say a mounted games and they were like whoa 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 what are you doing <laughs> And they were like, just sit. And it was just sitting around your corners like you would if you were show jumping. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> so it massively helps with our show jumping as well, to be totally honest. <laughs> so th what, what you just said, um, at the end of the Rider Confidence course, when everyone's been concentrating ever so much all day and we're all, we're all pretty tired and we've had the hypnosis session and we're all feeling pretty relaxed. And people say, what's the next thing to do then? How, how can I move on from here? And uh, undoubtedly, the next thing to do is to go and play. Go and yeah. play at something. Go and do horse ball or, or come here and do horseback archery or go and do something where you just need to take your horse over there and catch the thing. Mounted games is absolutely perfect. Where you're not going to worry. I mean, mounted games, you're flying around, you, you, your heels are up, your toes are nearly slipping through the stirrups if you're on the stirrups at all. It's, it's, it's a mess all over the place. But you've just got to go and get your, your ball or, or your apple or, or whatever. And, and people are all over the place having the wildest fun. And that's what people miss because they get into their lessons and then the instructor saying, lift your rib cage, put your elbows down, move your hips back. And you're thinking, I am. And they're going, you're not. And you think, I am. And, and by the time they've they've corrected you what you can hear is you can't do it 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 and i'm still the same that i get off after a lesson and i'm like i can't do this and it it's just the way it is if you then go and play you realize that actually you can get your horse over there grab the thing and run over and put it in the goal or or whatever and you need both. If you just have lessons, then you're just going to have, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. If you just play, then your riding is going to be appalling. So, yes. so we, need, we need our lessons. We need to be brave and be adults. But at the same time, we need to be children as well and simply enjoy ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, it's really important. That's what I've definitely learned, that you've just got to have fun. I think that's what I forgot. Um, yeah. No, it's all good. It's all fun. <laughs> so do you run um, mounted games for people to come to Jersey or do you teach it in mainland? Uh, or No, just our pony club here. It's not like proper, we can't vault or anything. It's more because we don't have a lot of kids. So it's just between all the ages, just put teams together. Brilliant. Brilliant. Quite good. <laughs> what, yeah. inspired, what inspired you to set that up then? I didn't set it up. It was just some pony club. Okay. I I used to just I used to do a lot of mat games when I was obviously a member. Yeah. And then I started helping out, and then just took it on. And I just find it really important. Like it's come even now. There's so many things it's helped me with. Like, for example, I was hunting and we stopped, and I went to pick something up, and then when I got on, my horse shot off. But because of mat games, I could get on quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and just stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, it just kind of helps. And like my horse, the other day I did something with a massive flag and she was absolutely fine. She just doesn't care. She's used yeah. to me doing different things. Yeah. No, so it, she doesn't it, worry. It's absolutely wonderful. And the, the greatest example that I'm always saying, find the joy, find the joy, find the joy, find the joy. And 
this, this this is i mean my book's called control your stress and enjoy your horse and that's exactly what i have in mind if you want to go and do mounted games if you want to go and have a go at this if you want to go on the beach and go get it's just marvelous marvelous to hear yeah yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for that. That's that's been a really good subject, and um, yeah. I hope you join us again. And uh, yeah, keep us keep us up to date with all the things that you do, especially the barrel racing. I will do. <laughs> Super. Thanks very much, Sophie. Speak to you thank later. You. Bye. 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 Excellent. Absolutely excellent. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, this social distance social club i'd like to thank you all for coming put in your comments there's a whole bunch of of comments there that i need to go through um once i've rung off so that i can read all those thank you for everybody uh this is your last opportunity is promote yourself wednesday i don't um Chris inspired that yesterday. Chris Lafab, my techie guy from america who has started learning horse riding as a result of helping me um, set up the internet arm of my business. He's, in fact, he had a lesson yesterday, I think. So he's, he's learning horse riding and he just came on um, really as a test of his own nerve to get onto something live because he knew that he wasn't um, quite as uh, outgoing as he could be so he was like you know what i'm just going to do this and he went five four three two one and he came on and he did it the knock-on effect of that is that claire came on today and said i saw chris do that yesterday and i went and did it and then she came on we've had a great conversation just the the knock-on effects of chris coming on has been absolutely fantastic that's really really good food for thought so i'm gonna i'm gonna think about that a bit more and see if we can't nail that down into a confident strategy for life and for horses so lovely last opportunity i'm gonna ring off bob your um where you are what you do any links for your business promote yourself wednesday thank you for all joining and i'll see you hopefully tomorrow bye everyone bye